Hi, this is Clayton from 3D Printway. Today we are going to build the Ender 3 version 2. Alright, so we have everything unboxed. First thing we're going to do is start with the base and putting our Z-axis extrusions on. We have our Z-limit switch. We'll need to put that on with that as well. So let's get started. I'm excited to try this thing out. Okay, so the difference between these, the one on the right is the one that has the two vertical holes on it. And those two vertical holes will be pointed more downward. The one on the left will have the two horizontal holes. Also, you would want to have that towards the bottom. So I'm going to check these ones here, make sure these are tight. That uh, one was a little loose. So this is the Z-axis limit switch. It already has the T-nuts on the back side. So if you just flip these vertically, it'll slip right into the extrusion. And this is a little stop right here. So this stop is going to rest right on top of this extrusion right here. All right, so on the left side of the machine above the power supply, we're gonna put our Z-axis motor. Um, for this, we're just, we just have these uh, screws here, which are gonna screw right into the back of this extrusion. So no T-nuts for this. And we're not gonna tighten this one all the way yet because we do need to adjust it later. Next, we're gonna take our Z-screw and put it into the Z motor. We're gonna tighten it up using the top Allen bolt here. This bottom one, we do not need to tighten up for this. We have the base done, so now we're going to put in the coupler for the Bowden tube. and you'll use your little open-ended wrench. Just make sure you don't crank these down too hard because it's pretty easy to strip out these brass fittings. This is our gantry. You wanna make sure that you notice this is not universal from side to side. You have to make sure you have this the right way. So this is going to take these two bolt holes right here and they're gonna thread in this way. This clearance is to clear over this nut. So if you have it this way, it's not gonna clear. You have to make sure you have it in the correct direction. I'm gonna take these button head screws and it's gonna thread in from the back side into the extrusion in that direction. Let's make sure that we get this belt into this channel. That way when we put the extrusion head on, the belt goes below these wheels. After that, we're gonna take this guide here and see the guide goes this direction. So this is gonna bolt on similar to how this did over here. So we're gonna take one of these button head screws feed it through the back. Make sure you don't fully tighten this down because we will need to put the tensioner on next. This is our x-axis tensioner. So pro tip on this one is I was trying to feed this belt through the middle of this tensioner and I found it is much easier. If you just take this nut off you can pull the pulley out and have really good access to wrap the belt around. And then just put this back in and save yourself a headache on that. If 
This just bolts up using your countersunk screw on the front side. And then you have another button head that goes on the back. And just tighten these up. Then we're gonna just slide the belt into these slots on the bottom of the extruder. If you need a little slack, you can loosen that up. And snug it back up. Let's put our gantry on now. You just need to line the wheels up on your extrusions. Just feed that down. You'll have your Z-screw which you'll need to thread on here. If you just turn this, it will pull it down, get you started. And mine was crooked, so I need to take this back up. There we go. And if you remember, we left these two screws loose. Now we can go ahead and tighten these up since we have this aligned. Here's our cross member, which we're gonna attach to the top of the printer. We'll just put the screws in first. Help us line it up. I'm gonna put the screen on now. So these T-nuts are gonna go into these two horizontal channels. If you wanna have the screen a little bit further forward or back, just put it wherever you like to have it. We're down to the last parts. We're gonna put our end caps onto the extrusions. We have our clip for the Bowden tube, so we'll just push this into the fitting. This clip just make sure it stays in place. The wheel for the extruder motor. And then finally, we can put our spool holder on. The wiring is pretty easy. We're just gonna plug the Z plug into the Z axis motor. The Z limit switch. The E plug goes into the extruder motor. The X plug goes into the x-axis motor. The x limit switch tucks in here. This is a very important step if you're in North America like me. You need to make sure that you switch the power supply over to the 115 setting. And last thing, we're going to plug in for the screen. And there we have it, the Ender 3 version 2 is finished. I'm gonna go ahead and power it up. So some of the upgrades with this printer over the original Ender is it does have a color screen on the front. You get the same Y-axis extrusion that they have on the Ender 3 Pro. You do also have a silicon carbide coated build plate, which they still give you a spare one inside the front. They have the toolless belt tensioners. A lot of people used to print these for the original Ender, but now it's just included out of the box, which is nice. And there is a toolbox in the front. If you would like any more information about this printer, or if you haven't already gotten one for yourself, there's a link in the description below.